Hello, pre-calculus students. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in pre-calculus. Today we're going to be talking about limits, but before we do that, I have to talk a little bit about the mean bros. Uh, this picture cracks me up. These guys really took a lot of shots at me last year in Algebra 2. So, I have the first, not the first, but I have three of the first five units this year in the pre-calculus course, so I'm going to try and take advantage while I can. And, uh, you know, some of these spaces are pretty good. Russ has turned out all right. Mr. Kelly, I'm sorry, man, but that is really scary looking. Great face, though. I love that picture. It went perfect with this. So let's get into this lesson. You will see that this actually is going to come back in at the end of our lesson. It has to do something with the lesson. But in the meantime, what is this lesson about? Limits. Jumping into our lesson here, this is going to be, uh, I find a lot of students tend to either understand this very quickly or struggle with it for quite a while, so hopefully we can get this clear on the first try. Before we jump into the limits part of our lesson, let's talk about continuous functions and also uh, discontinuity. So when a function is continuous and when it is discontinuous. A continuous function is a function that has no breaks or gaps in its graph. In other words, Another way of saying that is you can draw it without lifting your pencil. And so if I was drawing a graph, if I had to all of a sudden lift my pencil up in order to keep drawing it, then that would not be continuous. That would be discontinuous. But if I can uh, if I can draw it all the way across, even if it has a sharp corner, that's okay, maybe a corner there, a corner there. Corners don't matter, it's still continuous, as long as I don't have to lift my pen or pencil. All right, that is a continuous function. Now, that's an informal definition, uh, kind of like a like if we were talking to little kids here. We're not talking to mathematicians, because if we were talking to mathematicians, we'd want a much better definition. I'm going to give you that at the end of the lesson. Ooh, exciting. I know you can't wait. All right, so going on here, classifying some discontinuities. Here we have what's called removable discontinuity. Both these two graphs here, so the one here on top and the one here on bottom, these are removable discontinuities. And the way you can tell if it's a removable discontinuity is it's just one little hole in the graph. If I plugged up the hole, so let's go in here. I'm going to fill in this hole for just a second. Do not do this on your notes. I just want you to pay attention here. So if I filled in this hole, in fact, let's use a different color. Black would be better. So if I plug in this hole, then all of a sudden, now there's no break in it. If by just plugging in one simple hole, it would make this so that there's no gaps and no breaks, then it's called a discontinuity that we can remove. So it is a removable discontinuity. That's where this phrase comes from. Okay, so let me get rid of that, put it back in there. Uh, so that here, and if we come down here, scroll down and see this, this is also removable because if we plugged in that hole, it would be uh, continuous. So what we say, is, let me get rid of this, we call this a removable discontinuity at x equals negative 4. The x value is a negative 4, and so that's how we classify this. Now let's go over to the next example. Make sure you get that written down. Our next example, these are non-removable discontinuities. And the reason they're non-removable is because you cannot just fill in one little gap and make it continuous. See if we down here, there's a gap here, but if I just fill in that circle, that does not make it so that these two lines are connected. I would still have to jump down here and continue on. Therefore, it is non-removable. So this one here is actually a special type. It's a non-removable infinite discontinuity and it happens at x equals zero. So non-removable infinite. And the way you can know that is usually if we have these asymptotes here, there's a vertical asymptote that's going up and down, and so that vertical asymptote is creating an infinite, a lines that go off to infinity. So we call it infinite discontinuity. Now this one down here, this is a non-removable jump discontinuity. So non-removable jump, and it's jumping because we're going along here on this line, and then we jump down here, and then it keeps going. And again, it happens at x equals 3. So what you're going to do in your practice is identifying what type. Is it removable? Or is it non-removable? And then if it is non-removable, go even farther, a step further, and let's talk about is it an infinite discontinuity or is it a jump discontinuity? Now there's some other things dealing with oscillations and things like that, but we're not going to deal with that today. We're just going to talk about these two types of non-removable discontinuities. All right, so on this example, what I want you to do is pause the video now, and why don't you give it a shot and see if you can come up with, just like on our screen here, is it removable or non-removable? And then if it is non-removable here, then write down the specific type of non-removable discontinuity. All right, good luck.
And here's our answers. What you should have come up with was we have a jump discontinuity, so it's non-removable, at the x value of negative 3. So we say that a non-removable jump discontinuity at x equals negative 3. And then here, if we could fill in this discontinuity here where there's a gap, if we filled that in, that would make it continuous. Therefore, that makes this a removable discontinuity at the x value of 1 for this one here. All right, pretty simple. Hopefully, you got onto that pretty quick. Uh, now we're going to move on to limits. All right, the first thing, we're gonna, we'll do a one-sided limit, and then we'll talk about a limit that's just two-sided. So one-sided limits. It is the y value that a function approaches from either the left or the right side of a given x value. All right, let's get this written down. I know that sounds a little confusing. Trust me, this will all make sense. We'll go through an example, and then you can refer back to this definition here, and it'll, it'll uh, be a little easier. So we're, the big thing, though, is that we're talking about y values. The answer to limit problems are y values, not x values. Uh, so one-sided, we're either going from the left side or the right side. And the next part is that a limit is the y value that a function approaches at a, give, at a given, and then x value is what I've got here, right? Yep, x value. So the y value that a function approaches at a given x value if the left sided limit is equal to the right sided limit. So the, a limit exists if the left sided and the right sided limit are the same. If they're different, then there is no limit. All right, let me show you how that works. Uh, pause the video if you don't have all that done because I'm moving on. Okay, with that definition, now let's take a look at some of these examples. Now I've chosen these four examples to very clearly take you step by step of how to look, work with limits. And I find that this ends up working out pretty good. So let's zoom in on this first one and take a look at what this is saying. X is going to approach negative 3. So as X approaches negative 3, the limit is approaching what? So we look up here. Here's the negative 3. So we're looking at this value here. So what is the Y value as we approach from the left side and as we approach from the right side? So we're looking at both directions. The Y value then here, if you notice, this Y value is a 4. So that means this is a 4. As X approaches negative 3, the limit is 4. Okay, really, really basic. When the graph is continuous and it's just kind of going in a nice curved line here, it's easy. It's the same thing as the X value is negative 3, the Y value is 4. Okay, so here it's the same thing. Now let's go on over here. Here we have a hole, a removable discontinuity. So the limit, remember a limit means what is it approaching? So we first start on the left side, and as we approach this value, negative 3, and then we approach from the right side, approaching it. So from both sides, it's still approaching a y value right there of 4. So this is also 4. But the x value, when the x value is negative 3, what is the y value? It does not exist. It is not even there because, so let's put a DNE for does not exist, because it's an open circle. There is no graph, so f of negative 3 does not exist, but the limit is because limits are about where it is approaching. All right, now let's go to this one. The limit as x approaches negative 3. So again, on the left side of the graph, we're going up towards here. We're approaching where the graph is at negative 3. And on the right side, we're approaching up here. So both sides are going to the same place, headed in the same direction. So it is still a y value of 4. But in this time, the actual value of the graph is down here at negative 2. Okay, so the limit was up here that's headed to the same spot. The y value of the graph is down here at negative 2. They're not the same thing in this case. And then here are number 4. Oh, I have five examples, not four examples. Fourth one here. So let's do the left side. The limit on the left side as we're approaching up here, it is a value of 4. The limit on the right side, as we're approaching from the right, it is a value of negative 2. So since these don't match, remember they have to be the same side, let's go look at our definition. That the left-sided limit is equal to the right-sided limit. And since these two things, the left side and the right side, don't equal each other, then the limit does not exist. So now let's try f of negative 3 the value of the graph at negative 3. So we come out here, negative 3. The y value of the graph is negative 2. It's where the filled-in circle is, not the open circle. All right, one more here. 
limit from the left side is here, the limit from the right side is going this way, and they're not going to the same place. They're not headed the same direction, so again, this one is does not exist. And the y value of the graph, when x equals negative 3, it's the filled in dot right here, so it's just the number 1. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If that does not make sense with what your limits are, coming from the left side and coming from the right side, then you may want to rewind and rewatch just this one part here before we go on. Number three, here I've given you a graph and we're going to figure out what all of these things are here. Some of them are limits and some of them are just what the y value is. So the first thing, if you zoom in and look at this, I want to point this out to you. This piece right here, that little negative thing, it's up in the exponent. When it's in the exponent, this means we're approaching negative two from the left side only the left side. So we come over here to our graph and we're going to approach negative 2 only from the left side and that has a y value of 1. So this one is a 1. Letter B. Notice the little exponent thing. It has a positive. That means we're coming from the right side, from the positive side. It doesn't mean we head positive direction. We start right of negative 2 and we come back to it. So what is this one going on? We're going towards negative 2 and the, the x value of negative 2 and the y value also happens to be negative 2. All right, now that means this one, negative 2, when you see nothing in the exponent, that means you're talking about both sides. When there's nothing there, you're talking about the left side and the right side. And since the left side does not equal the right side at negative 2, then the limit does not exist. Okay, part D. Actually, you know what? This would be good right now. I'm going to ask you to pause. Why don't you pause this video, see if you can come up with the rest of these, given all the examples we've done, and I will have the answers pop up here in just a minute. So pause now. And there's your answers. You can check here. So 1, negative 2, 5, negative 3, 0, 1, negative 2. Check those there. I'm going to like briefly explain this for those of you who weren't sure. So the limit as x approaches 1, we're looking at this spot right here. So from both sides, the left side and the right side, they're both coming together right here. So it is the y value of 1. It doesn't matter that the y value actually is down here because we're talking about a limit. And then as x approaches 0, so as x approaches 0, the graph's down here are negative 2. So that's nice and simple. 3 from the left side. So we're approaching 3 from the left, which means we're going this direction. And so it's a y value up here at 5. And x is approaching negative 1. So here's my negative 1. We're going to this spot from both sides. And so it's a negative 3. And then here we're approaching negative 3 of an x value. So we're approaching right there left side here, the left side and the right side are both headed to the same pl place, which is zero. And then these, the last two maybe uh, might have tricked you up a little bit. We're looking at f of negative two. So we come out here to negative two and then down here is an open circle. Up here is a closed circle. So that's our answer, the y value of one. And then for the last one, f of one, there's the closed circle. So it's a y value of negative two. All right, hopefully you did okay on that one. And let's move on. This problem is a true or false problem, so I want you to pause the video now and just go through and answer true or false for each of these statements. And there are your answers. What I noticed, all of them were true except for the last one's false. Uh, what I noticed though was that some of these things tripped me up just a little bit, and that is when you see this, this 1 raised to the negative. Sometimes I thought, okay, that's a negative 1, but it's not. That has nothing to do with negative 1. It's 1 from the left side. So we're approaching the value of 1 from the left side, like this. We're approaching that y value of 1. Okay, so don't be careful with those negatives, whether it's in front, like this one, or whether it's up in the exponent, like that one. The last one is false because as x approaches 2 from both the left side and the right side, the limit exists, the limit's a 2. So it's not, does not exist, it's 2. Now, if we were talking about what is f of 2, that, then yeah, that would not exist. That's not there because it's an open circle. Okay, we have now covered the most important part of our lesson. The next part is just some geeky math speak, but I want to make sure if you have questions, write them down right now. Pause and don't keep going. Write, the down, write down the problems that you don't understand, circle them, star them, to make sure you talk with your classroom teacher about them because you got to know how to do this stuff in order to be successful with future things. We're getting close to being done with our notes here. 
Now we're going to do a really smart mathematical way. You're going to look like a genius because you will understand this. So for f of x to be continuous, the following three conditions must be met. Number one, f of c is defined. In other words, c is in the domain. Now what in the world is c? c is just some number, any number I want to choose. So I'm going to say f of 2, f of 3, f of negative 5 billion and 7. It does not matter. So we're just choosing any number we want, and we're going to say that that number exists, that that is part of the graph. All right, so that's condition number one. Condition number two for a function to be continuous. When we have the limit as the x values approaching that specific c, 5 billion and 7, or whatever we said, whatever number we chose, that the limit exists. In other words, the graph is approaching the same spot from both the left side and the right side. Okay, that's number two. And then our last condition, we have that the limit, uh, whatever that limit is, we know it exists, and that limit is equal to the y value of the function. So there can't be a removable discontinuity there because the limit it's approaching the limit and the graph exists at that exact same point. Okay, this is a nice formal definition for a continuous function. And if you understand that, you're well on your way to becoming a great mathematician. That's this is the math speak of how we define things. And congratulations on finishing your first lesson on limits. We are now going to have a, a little video clip from the movie Mean Girls because there's actually math involved and it's dealing with limits, so that's really cool. So this is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that master check, and I will see you back in the next lesson. Contestants, find the limit of this equation. Calling somebody else fat won't make you any skinnier. Calling someone stupid doesn't make you any smarter. And ruining Regina George's life definitely didn't make me any happier. All you can do in life is try to solve the problem in front of you. The limit is negative one. Oh, crap. I lost. That answer is incorrect. Now, we are in a sudden death. If Miss Heron can answer this problem correctly, we have a winner. Limits. Why couldn't I remember anything about limits? Limits. That was the week Aaron got his hair cut. Oh, God, he looks so cute. Okay, focus, Katie. What was on the board behind Aaron's head? If the limit never approaches anything, the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. Our new state champions, the North Shore Mathletes. Yeah.